Hi again. Um, this time, I still don't have a script, but I know what I'm going to do. So, I'm at least going to attempt tonight to replace the keyboard membrane in my oldest Model M. This is not its original shell. This is an industrial gray shell um, from 1993 that Unicomp used to sell. Um, Unicomp being the company that still makes IBM Model M style keyboards in Kentucky today. Um, anyway, so Unicomp bought IBM, an old IBM plant, which actually was Lexmark. Ugh, let's start earlier. Lexmark spun off of IBM uh, to make peripherals and stuff, and printers, that sort of thing, for IBM and others eventually. Um, now, Lexmark eventually sold off this um, plant and um, Unicomp bought it and the tools to make like Model M buckling spring keyboards and a few other products. Um, in any event, they can still make you a new IBM Model M buckling spring style keyboard to this day. Um, lighting is going to be a challenge. Let's see if I um, planned ahead at all, which I know I didn't, and see if I can find uh, the dimmer. Here it is. Up, oh, but it's switched off at the outlet. Off to a great start, aren't we? <laughs> but basically, basically, I just got home and um, had some mail, and this was one of the packages. The other package, which I might do something on later is a Competition Pro joystick, the original revision that used leaf switches instead of um, the later um, clicky micro switches. And uh, I haven't messed with that at all yet, but that's for another time. Um, so for now, buckling spring keyboard. And I'm going to replace a bad membrane. Um, you'll see markings all over the place on this. That's because of like me making notes for myself, basically. Um, but in the past, I've bolt modded this. So Model M keyboards um, are riveted together, usually. I think I have another one behind me. Um, yes. Here we go. So um, another Model M keyboard. This is uh, in its original shell. Um, but uh, this is screwed together. It has one screw holding it in place. I have this though. So that'll come out. And um, yeah, so IBM Model M keyboards have uh, internal construction looks like this. Um, this one has not been modified, um, although the controller is not in it. But um, yeah, so this is what the back of a Model M keyboard base plate looks like. Um, this one's from 1993. Some of the earliest ones have this rainbow colored shell, um, like tempered steel look to them. Um, not this though. Uh, but these plastic dots here are all places where they had these um, stakes, like think like gardening stakes that stick up from um, the back of this black plastic piece and they stick out down below. And then um, I'm guessing what they do is they have this heated curved like iron basically that they drop the keyboard um, frame onto. And um, the, and maybe they press down on the top, I don't know. And uh, they melt down the plastic stakes um, to hold the, plastic piece flat against the steel on the back plate. Um, so that's great for cheap manufacturing, but it also means to take these things apart, you have to pop off all of these rivets and find a way to fasten it back together again. So that's called a bolt mod. And um, there's also the screw mod, which is basically the same deal. Um, either way, you are threading some screw-like thing through the frame of the keyboard um, after drilling holes where each of the rivets were originally and um, 
screwing the thing back together. So I'm going to just screw, just put the shell back together and put the screw back in place. Um, all right. So yeah, that's done. Anyway, that one's in good shape. This one isn't, but uh, it's my oldest Model M. It's from 1987. It originally had a silver label badge on it. Um, actually, I have that case here too. So, see uh, the badge right there? Yeah, so this is the original casing from this keyboard. It's from my IBM 3161. But I, uh, I like the industrial gray shell. So, the other case is just sitting in a box. Um, but, yeah, so this board feels better than the others in my opinion. Um, and I felt this way even before I found out online that people agreed with me, so I'm pretty sure it's actually true. Um, the keys feel smoother when you press on them. There's less of a scratching feel. Like, there's very little on a normal Model M, but there's even less here. And it feels like the keys maybe click a little bit at a different spot and more consistently. It, it's just a slightly better feeling board, and you'll have to trust me on that. I think the plastic material might have also changed because, um, if you put Unicomp keycaps on one of these, it feels really scratchy. Um, so either, so I, I'm guessing the barrels, the things that these uh, keycaps sit on, change. But yeah, so it feels great, and I like using this board a lot. And I even added a little LED thing on the corner. But um, it unfortunately does have um, a couple of issues, and one of them is caused by me by taking this thing apart too much. Um, the keyboard membrane itself um, has breaks in it, so it doesn't send, like, it doesn't make continuity to go to the controller to um, send all the keystrokes. So some keys on this board are just dead. And in the past, I've fixed that with a conductive pen, um, which I have here. Um, these things are cool. You gotta shake them like that. But um, once you've done that, adjusting the mic, sorry. Um, once you've done that, though, you use it like a whiteout pen, and you can just draw the traces onto the membrane and um, form continuity and fix corrosion, that sort of deal. It's really cool, but um, and I fixed this keyboard for a while by doing that, but it didn't it didn't stay good like that, and so I. Um, Where'd I put that screw that I just took out? It's a good thing I did it on video. But, uh. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Um. So. Anyway, the. The conductive pen works, but, um. I was noticing that, like, every time I took this thing apart again, um, the traces were breaking again. Um. I'm guessing that's just because this flakes off. It's not really meant to flex much. But, like, if it cured in its correct curled position, then it's fine. Until it gets flexed again. Anyway, I got sick and tired of it after dealing with this for months, <laughs> maybe longer. And, um, I have a similar fix that I did on my, on my, um, space-saving keyboard. Which is actually the new Unicomp, um, 10 keyless mini M board. Uh, yeah, I, I did a similar fix on that, but, um, huh. crap. One moment. I just messed something up with the pin connector here. I do have new replacement pin connectors for this because a project of mine that I never finished was um, or haven't finished yet was to make a new keyboard controller for a Model M. Um, so I have more of these connectors and you can still get them new uh, but I just pull the pin out. That's not a common thing it's because I did something dumb with this and stuck foil in it. Um, Okay, I think that's back down in and will probably work now. We'll see. 
I think I remember which keys are mapped to that, so we'll tell once we have this membrane in, and maybe even before we've done anything but that, we can figure out what the deal is. So, um, we got the cable here. Let's do that right now, actually. I'm gonna put the controller board on my lap so that's out of the way and it's not going to short on the steel plate or something. Um, detached. Yeah, I'm hot plugging PS2. You shouldn't do that, but I did it. Um, right. So let's check the traces on this thing. Um, so the trace that the problem was on was this far one over on the edge. And if I track that down, it looks like, uh, what would be a good key? Looks like the up arrow key would be one that I should be able to, um, to trigger if uh, this works right. So um, if my fix is correct, I should be able to press down where the up arrow key is and get something to register. Uh, let's set up a screen. Oops, I, um, no, I just unplugged this keyboard. <laughs> Here we go. Now, Let's make this text smaller too. You don't even really need to be able to read it, just tell that something's happening. Okay, now I'm unplugging. Plugging in. The controller, oops, wrong side of the cord. There we are. Now, if I connect both of these ribbons, which I believe I do. How do I do that? The conductive side is this one, but this sheet gets in the way. Let's check Unicomp's page. Unplugging again. We've got two pictures here, which hopefully I can make load. Oh, they're going to try to save. Great. Of course. Of course. All right. Try loading this up and see what happens. All right. So remove the four right. Yeah, that that's for um, keyboards that don't have the LEDs on the um, the strips. That's not something I need to worry about yet. Um.
clear tab on number three should be full over the top. Okay, so that's to add thickness to the ribbon to make it easier to insert and remove, I guess. Um, yeah, so it's just telling me not to plug the, the cable in. So let's, um, and what I'm talking about here, there's two sheets and um, one of them just has clear plastic and no conductors on it. And um, that will cover up these pins if I use it. So I guess I'm just supposed to not plug that in. <laughs> and I'm supposed to fold this tab over the top. And it is kind of perforated, so you can see where you're supposed to fold that tab. All right. Let's line that up and try not to flex this too much more than I need to. All right. And the other one. Okay. So now I should be able to plug this in. Oh, crap. I need to go back to the... Um, event viewer or event tester and plug it in now and do we get anything on the up arrow nope do we get anything on the other keys huh we do not I wonder if that's something else that's the matter here. strange. Very strange indeed. None of these keys are registering. Is it plugged in? Yeah. It's plugged in here too. Yeah. We'll unplug it and plug it in again. Nothing. Quite peculiar. Wonder what's wrong. None of the keys are working. Did I fold the tab over the wrong way? No. Is this the problem? Oh, yep, this is the problem. So this one also had the secondary flex cable that I'm not supposed to plug in. So now, maybe I'll get something. Maybe. If I insert it all the way, that'll help. Yep, there we go. Now we have input and control key works. That's the key that wasn't working before. <laughs> so left control and right control can be pushed independently of each other. That was also messed up on here. We're good. So another thing I want to say real fast, um, these early model boards have um, additional key pads like under the numpad here, there's um, an extra spot on the membrane that's right here that you can put another key in and it will send scan code. It'll send scan codes to the computer. Um, even like later model M's, um, like my 1993 model M, um, controller board will send those codes if there's something hooked up there. I don't know if all the later membranes have that pad, but um, the Unicomp one does. So it should be an exact um, replacement, except that this doesn't have the ribbon cable membrane because it predates that. And this was retrofitted on. Like you might, you might remember from the casing that I showed you for the silver label that it did not have LEDs. It did not have the LED bezel thing on it, which uh, looks like that. 
Okay, so we verified that works. You might also notice all these little cardboard pieces and crap that I've shoved in here. Those fixed my problems for a while, but this thing is just so horrible, so I'm ready to be done with uh, this particular membrane if I can. Even though I wish I didn't have to. I'd like to keep it, like, original. But I'd rather have it work at the end of the day. Okay, so I'm moving the case aside. And I'm going to unplug the controller board and plug in the keyboard I'm using to manipulate the screen, which uses white Alps key switches, which feel really nice, by the way. Um, I've heard it said that my specific board has oddly smooth white Alps switches. I don't know if I should really trust that because this is my only white Alps board. But um, some rando on the internet said that, so maybe they're right. Um, like smoother than they normally are, closer to how the Alps blue switches are. I, I did not know that when I picked this up. It does, however, feel very smooth, and I can say that I enjoy it quite a bit. And if blue Alps are even better, then like I'd really like to try them, but everyone wants to try them, so it's too expensive. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Let's. Um, I like Alps key switches. They are more tactile than cherry ones. Uh, that's the long story short of it. Okay, other things I got, um, I have this little rubber mat, and you'll see when I take this apart what that's for. And um, I have some buckling spring um, flipper replacements just in case I mess something up in here. Actually, I already had the buckling spring flippers. The mat is new though. And um, I'll explain that more later. So yeah, I, I have a whole bunch of bolts in the underside of here, and I didn't bother filling in all of these positions. Actually, really fast, I'm going to take a picture so that um, when I'm putting it back together, I kind of have a cheat sheet for what worked before. <clears throat> it's really exhausting putting these things together with uh, the bolt mod that you have to do and everything else. Um, should have a yellow handled Phillips head driver. I was away from home for a couple days, so I've kind of lost my sense of state for where everything is. One second. While I look around. Okay, I found it. It was in my room on the shelf I thought it might be on. So yay. By room, I mean bedroom. All right. So I did not use washers or like the locking retention pieces like people say you should. And it hasn't caused issues that I'm aware of so far. I don't think that's why this failed. But, um... Yeah, that's something you probably should do if you're doing this. I also used imperial screw measurements uh, because I live in America and unfortunately metric ones are hard to come by. And the McMaster car order for like metric screws that I paid for never showed up, like ever. So, and this was a couple years ago that I ordered them, so they're just gone. Which was a great first interaction with that company, but they work for other people, so probably it's nothing too bad. The other thing I had to do was remove um, bits of the sticker here, which made me sad because that included a little bit of pen writing. Um, but what are you going to do? I want this keyboard to work. It's just kind of a monster at this point. So, okay. But yeah, I'm just kind of willy-nilly choosing screws or bolts to pull out. No particular order to it. If I can keep all these screws just inserted like this, 
then maybe that will make it easier for me to uh, put it back together. Um, okay, there's still a screw. I forget the exact metric, I mean, imperial units that I ended up getting, unfortunately. I'm really sorry about that. If I find the box or something, which I might still have for um, these, then I'll try to update the video. Or at least the description. Ah, okay, this one is going to need the screwdriver holding it from below. Okay. There we go. Tighten that back up. There we are. Okay. <sighs> this was all a nerve-wracking procedure for me when I was doing it. And very time-consuming, because if you mess up one key switch, then you have to take the whole thing apart again. If this video starts getting way too long, I'll stop it midway and maybe resume it later or just say, um, this keyboard died on the way back to its home planet or something like that. Simpsons reference, by the way. Um, there we are. But it felt fitting here because, um, that character is like perma-kill, just so that no one has any illusion that they're coming back. It's a itchy and scratchy character. But, um, so like after he leaves Earth, um, there's just a title card thrown up on the screen saying that he, that like the character died on the way back to his home planet. And, uh, if I fail to, fail to do this keyboard after shutting off the video, maybe I'll just say that. As a way of letting you know, it didn't make it. And that doesn't mean it'll never make it again, it just means I'm going to have even more work cut out for me. Which will be exciting, of course. Okay. Also, this base plate has some cracks in it, which were already there when I started, I think. So, I'm trying not to make those any worse than they already are, because if there isn't a, a hole for me to, like, stick a screw through near where the crack is, then it isn't sandwiched flat, and it can cause issues with the rockers. The, um, when I say rockers, I should probably show what I mean. Um, some people call them hammers. I don't know what Unicomp or IBM's official terminology was. Even though I bought these on the Unicomp site, I've already forgotten. Okay. So, crud. Okay, holding the bolt from the back, twisting, there it goes. I even had to purposely deform one spring on this board to make the switch operate correctly, which was a perverse and horrible thing, but it's worked really well since then, so if I still have to do that after this swap, then I'll leave it alone, but otherwise, um, maybe I'll be able to make myself go back in and replace it with a better spring. I'm guessing I should just leave it alone, because it's probably due to something else I did that it needed to happen that way in the first place, or because of the cracks. You'll notice there's a bit of marker here that says do not use, because if I put a screw in that hole it messes everything up, and that's probably because I drilled it a little off-center or something. You have to be really precise with this. It kinda sucks. But if you do the bolt method as opposed to like the self-threading screw method, you can do this a whole bunch of times uh, if needed. Okay. Let's see. 
I'm forget. I'm forgetting if you can do this without removing the. Yeah, you will have to remove the keycaps. That's right. Uh, you have to remove the keycaps because um, if you don't, then the springs will be fighting against you when you try to push the plates back together. And they'll push the membrane up and push everything out of alignment and make it horrible. It might technically be possible to do this without removing the keycaps, but don't try it. I mean, you can try it if you'd like. I won't stop you, but I'm just telling you it probably won't go well, and you'll probably end up having to pop them out. Uh, if I remember correctly how this went last time. Uh, I had a keycap puller. I mean, I can do this by finger because it's not too hard with the Model M. Ah, uh, here it is. But yeah, I have a keycap puller here. Which, um, Matthias, um, who makes reproductions, sort of, of the simplified version of the Alps key switches. Um, Matthias' um, company sells these things. I've also seen them on eBay. I think they're generic, probably. But... Um, they use them for their keycaps, and Alps keycaps stick really tight, so it's good to have a nice puller like this. Also, it's plastic, so it doesn't dent the keys at all. I hope. <laughs> um, let's see. I should probably not be putting these on top of the keyboard that is going to control the video stream when there's already stuff stacked on top of it. Because uh, it's just going to end with me pressing the space bar and pausing the stream or something. Uh, by stream, I just mean the video that's being captured by the capture card that's coming from my camera. Um, let's see, where's a nice container? A nice empty container. <laughs> ah, this. The thing that my, um, that my, um, joystick that my joystick just came in I'll sit that on the floor and I'll deal with that later and for this top row I probably don't even need the puller I've done Alps keyboards without a puller it is horrible it, like it's just painful and I've damaged keycaps doing it before a couple times so with Alps key switches, do yourself a favor, use a puller, and be patient. And don't, like, torque it or anything. Yeah, for these that are closer together, I'm popping them out. There we are. Alright. By the way, if um, you haven't done bolt mod before, um, you basically have to chisel all the rivets off. And then um, drill through the holes in the steel that are underneath. After aligning it correctly so it goes straight through. And make sure there are no bumps that like protrude outward from where the drill went through like around the edges of the hole because those can cause problems with the membrane and key switch actuation which is what happened over here with the do not use hole if i remember right there's also a crack in the plastic over on yeah there's one right here and this was also annoying because there's no screw really close to it Maybe at some point I'll try, like, finding a tiny clamp, if such a thing exists. And if it doesn't, maybe I'll have to try to make one somehow. Or, like, use a chip clip. I don't know. Uh, probably I should have taken a picture. Because this uses a terminal layout.
it'll be fine. I have pictures of this thing somewhere. I'll fi I'll figure it out. But I will take a picture of what's left, I guess. Just save time. Uh, I also have a video stream for a lot of this. Okay, so let's line that back up. Now that it's all in frame, I'll continue. And I'm just kind of popping them out and then using my thumb to uh, push the switch through. So I'm not constantly picking this up and pulling it out and dropping it, picking up the keycap, dropping that, picking this up again, popping one out, and so on. All right. Other things that might be worthwhile when you're inside of one of these include um, replacing stabilizers, which you can get from Unicomp. Um, for the double wide keys, these those are these little insert things that go in here. And if your keys are kind of binding on the edges, which means they're not like, they're resisting going down and like they're kind of just holding and then pop, it suddenly goes. Uh, it's really annoying. You'll know what I mean if you have a wide key and pushing on the edge does that kind of thing. Um, it, replacing them can help. Also replacing the keycaps in addition to the stabilizers helps. But um, if you want to keep the original keycaps, just replacing the stabilizers does a ton. I sent one of my Model M's, I used to have three, um, to a f good friend of mine because she hadn't um, used one before and I knew she'd like it just because of all the other things she talks about liking tactily and she did like it but before I sent it I replaced the stabilizers just um, and actually I sent her extra keycaps so that she would have replacements for the uh, wide keys as well. Um, the new keys that Unicomp prints have a slightly different font than the originals for the um, smaller text. Like for the big legends on the keys, it's all the same. But like the word enter, the way it's written here, the typeface is slightly different. So, um, and they did not let me um, use the old font. Like I asked them, can you do that? And they couldn't. So, um, they couldn't let me use that old font, so I had to. Um, they were recommending just buying all this, all the keys that needed that had those small legends on them, and I decided not to do that. I decided I'd just, uh, well, I'd figure it out. The biggest crack in this base plate is over on this side with the numpad, so I'm trying to be careful here. Oh, also an interesting thing. Only the earlier Model M's had a vertical stabilizing bar like this. The later ones had a black colored insert here. Or sometimes maybe it was other colors, but I think usually it was black. Maybe blue. I'm, I'm forgetting. But uh, yeah, later ones have a stabilizer insert there. And so if you get a new keycap from Unicomp, I'm not sure if you can get this exact one with the stabilizing bar. You might have to ask them for an insert and the new style cap. Uh, if you have an early silver label M that needs new keycaps. This one's from 1987. Um, it's a model 1386303. I know that off the top of my head. <laughs> and um, it's for an IBM 3161 terminal, which I got for like $18, like this keyboard with the terminal for 18 bucks at a, um, at a ham radio convention. Another interesting thing, um, the S key, I mean, no, not the S key, the F key and the J key, um, yeah, the ones that have the little bumps on the undersides for your fingers to feel where home row is, um, those are two-piece caps, and so is the five key on the number pad for this board. All the rest are single piece. 
Um, my other Model M, all the keys are two-piece caps, except for some of the wide ones. But, yeah, it's just interesting that, um, that they had wide caps like that. There, what was I saying? That, that's not right, that they had wide caps like that. It's interesting that they... I completely just forgot what I said. Oh well. It's interesting. Whatever it was, it was interesting. For that one brief moment in time. <laughs> um, Alright. So, now I have that all apart. You can maybe see the fissure in the plate uh, right there. See that crack it goes all the way up to here? Yeah, it's a nice big long fissure. And uh, there's a smaller crack on this side, um, right above my thumbnail. And some of these things, you might see something that looks like a crack here, that's just a fold right now, but they can turn into cracks if you're not careful. Um, oh, and there's a huge one too. It's so dirty. Um, down by the space bar, I forgot about this because it wasn't causing issues, I think. But there's a huge one. There's even a little hole right here that you can see through. But, um, yeah, exciting. And uh, because the plastic changed, it would probably lose a lot of its smoothness if I replaced this plate. So that's why I didn't get a new one of these, even though Unicomp sells new base plates. I have a feeling that they're all made the same way. So I didn't want to do that. And to get a new set of keycaps, and that'd be a ship of Theseus kind of thing. Is it really the same keyboard? And in my opinion, the answer is no. So I'm going to try it. Oh yeah, there's also screws I put down in these corners, and I threaded these upside down because um, the screws were bumping against the uh, plastic of the case, and so I had to polish the heads down so they were flatter. Um, and then I used, because I polished down the heads of the screws, I stuck them in the underside so that they would be flat and not bulge out like these, um, that, like these do. Uh, these nuts, I guess. <laughs> these nuts. I'm I'm so immature. So immature. Okay. Um I think now that's all of them. And maybe I should just loosen up these screws manually as well. I'm not going to pull them out if I can avoid it. Just uh, raise them up out of their holes a bit so that they aren't fighting me or rubbing against the metal on the way out. Yeah, that, that one was holding a lot of pressure. Um, is that actually going to come off now? Oh, no, this one needs to come out. Alright. Um, now I pull out the bottom two screws. The ones that are hooking it in upside down. There it goes. And I'll put these in a separate spot because they're flattened like that. They are special. And I will flip this over. A good idea, if I remember right, a good idea with these is to do it in the frame, in the top of the shell. Try not to bend the springs when you're doing that. 
Okay, now it's kind of held in place by the casing and lifted a little by the casing. All right. And we lift and it comes right off. Yay, base plate off, finally. So now you can inspect this membrane if you would like. And so can I. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all the brakes are up here, really, but I also, when I was diagnosing last time I did this, I drew on the undersides, like this here is a conductive pen trace. Yeah, I think I know what all the problems are, but I'll mess with this outside of the keyboard. Maybe I can fix it. I don't know. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm moving on to bigger and better things. Oh, also, uh, this is um, poster mounting putty. Like, Plastitac was an old brand name for it that no longer exists. But 3M poster mounting putty is what I found. And uh, I was using that to kind of stick the sheets together to hold them in place. All right, so the way this works is you have the base membrane piece. You have uh, this little separator piece, which just has a bunch of holes in it and exists to create spacing, like an air gap between the two uh, magnetic sh between the two uh, sheets that have conductive pads on them, so that um, force is required to push through the air gap and cause a connection. It's actually pretty similar to how touch or like resistive um, touch screens like the Nintendo DS work, where there's similarly two layers of plastic separated by an air gap. Um, the details might differ, but it, I think it's a similar enough concept. Huh. Oh, so I marked where the M and N keys were, so I must have been having trouble with them. And I think there's also a little piece of electrical tape on here. Oh yeah. This was another hack I did to increase the air gap on this key because it was registering prematurely when I was pushing down from above. This was so horrible. I, ho I hope this one's better and I don't have to do that, but I have a feeling that it's all problems I caused by incompetency or just not knowing what I'm doing when I was working on the, uh, on the uh, bolt mod and drilling the holes. So this is a rubber sheet. Um, Unicomp calls it a blanket, and um, I have uh, the receipt here, which has the part number on it. Um, okay, so I'll type it up on screen for you. Uh, yeah, so. Um, so what I ordered was membrane assembly, which is the same as this thing here, only in the note for part number, instead of putting 138-6303, which is the part number for this keyboard, I put, um, blanket part number, uh, 140-3033. And that's the number that um, is the magic code for the rubber sheet. And Unicom's replacement sheet is a slightly thinner um, latex-like material. It might even be latex. Yeah, it smells like latex. If you have an allergy, just be aware of that. Um, but I think it's latex. Uh, and it replaces this thicker black sheet, if you so choose. You can keep the original in, but I've heard people say, and this has been backed up by my experience with the space saving board, that um, the keys strokes feel a lot sharper with the new membrane, with um, Unicomp's membrane in there. So uh, I'm going to try using that instead of the original. 
which also smells like latex. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll see if that changes the feel of the board by much. Uh, you'll also notice some of these key... Um, sorry, I'll get this out of the way. Um, you'll also notice some of these key... These are hammers, actually. Um, are different colors than the rest, and those are ones that were replacements from Unicomp. The originals are this translucent color, and some of them are slightly more tinted than others. I'm not sure why that is, but it doesn't seem to be an issue. But um, these, the ones I got from Unicomp are white. Uh, let's see, what else to say about this? Some of the early keyboards have this little hosing that's like fish tank air tubes or something. I don't know what to really relate them to. Um, in the sides to prevent contamination from, like contaminants from getting in from the edges. Um, later ones just have plastic molded that like drops down either side instead. And um, the space saving board I have, they, I think they just sawed the edge off of, um, like the numpad off of a full base plate. And so there's just a gaping hole there. But I don't expect it to cause problems because the keyboard is encased itself. And I'm. it would even kind of maybe help if you spill something in it because you can kind of tilt it out the side and let it air out that way. So it might even be a good thing. I don't know. It's just something interesting I noticed. Anyway, these, these um, hammers are very lightweight and knock out of place extremely easily when you're putting the keyboard back together. And um, so it can be quite irritating when, while attempting to reposition one, you mess up another one. Or if just one of these things is out of alignment, then the whole thing, like, you have to take it all apart again. Uh, okay, this looks fine now. I actually added hammers to the positions that didn't have them. Um, I think this one might not even have a spring on it. No, it has a spring on it. But that's that's on the keypad um, for the plus key, I think, maybe. Uh, I don't really remember the details. But some of these keys did not originally have um, hammers on them. I added those. Maybe I stole from other keycap positions to use the original hammers there. But whatever the case, I filled in all the blanks so that if later on I wanted to mess with it and add new keys, I wouldn't have to do this again. Of course, I had to do it again anyway to replace this membrane, but whatever. Uh, let's see. So numpads on this side. And the space bar is down near me. So that means it needs to go on like this. And um, some of these screws poking out are, and also old rivet spots where I didn't drill through, are making it so you have to kind of coax it into place. And this coaxing process can cause keys to jump, like hammers to jump. So even more excitement there. Ah. There it goes. That hole did not want this peg to go through it. In fact, I might have split the sheet a tiny bit. Hopefully that doesn't grow. No, actually I think maybe that was just... Yeah, that's just a mount. That's just markings by the, um, by the machine to align the membrane. I'm gonna clean this off since I see little hairs and stuff on it. That's the problem with long hair. And also being male. <laughs> Um, there we go. So I'm just making sure all of these, that the membrane's sitting through all of these holes and that there's no resistance. And now, ah, uh, crap, I forgot the rubber sheet. You can do this without the rubber sheet in place, and some people say that makes it feel fantastic. 
like like breaking glass under each key or like a model f or something which doesn't have a rubber pad but um i'm afraid that it's going to wear out the membrane sheets more quickly and so i um hesitate to do that but maybe someday i'll try it if i have to do another bolt mod on another board i very likely will assuming unicomp's still around to save my butt if uh if i mess something up if or when I mess something up. Okay. Realign the hammers that popped out of place again. I should really prop this up on something from the sides. I know. <laughs> Flux containers. That'll work. Keep the springs from pushing up from below on the hammers and knocking them out of alignment. Sometimes if the hammers are near the edge, you can kind of coax them into place without taking the whole thing apart by just lifting up from the side after removing all the screws. I think I did do that actually, but that could cause damage to the plastic, so it's really probably best if you don't. Um, also make sure that all these are loose in here, like that they wiggle kind of freely. If they don't, then that means probably when you were drilling the holes, um, some plastic got where it shouldn't, and that the keys won't pivot freely. Yeah, these feel fine. I think I roughly remember where the problem areas were. One of them was definitely up here. Okay, um... I think that's the trick switch where I have a purposefully bent spring on it. Uh, no actually. Did I fix that properly ever? Or is it this one? No. Interesting. I was sure I'd done that. I'll figure out when I put it back together where that was. Or if that still is a thing. Okay, time to put the membrane sheet on, or the rubber mat, the blanket in Unicomp terms which I'm guessing they inherited from IBM and Lexmark, but I don't know that. They did inherit a lot, like part numbers, for a lot of things. Um, Now I'm doing the same thing I did with the plastic sheets, only I'm doing it with this really thin latex one. This must be easier in the factory before everything's been melted down. When the stakes are narrower. using the stakes and screws as guideposts. And this is a much thinner feeling sheet, so I can imagine that it's going to sound a little bit different too. But I did like the way my um, 10 keyless felt and sounded. So hopefully this is actually an upgrade. Ah, oh, crap. There's a tear. There's a tear right there. It's probably fine, but... Maybe I'll complain to Unicomp. We'll see. If it works fine, I probably won't, but... 
I might have even done that, to be honest, while I was guiding it on or something. It, it's very, it's a very thin sheet of latex. But I think it was already torn. Uh, I don't think it'll actually impede anything. It's a very insubstantial layer. Okay, now we're putting this over top and uh, we're flipping it so it's aimed the right direction. It's nice that they'll sell you internal parts like this that IBM never would have sold something like this. They'd have had you buy a whole new keyboard. I'm almost sure of it. So I really do appreciate what Unicomp does. I'm still interested in trying like the new Model Fs or whatever, but I just don't have money right now. Hire me, guys. I'd be a great asset to your company. Especially if you have ancient stuff. But, I mean, even if you don't, I really think I could be helpful. Um, Alright. So, yeah, that looks like it's in. So, now we sandwich it together. And we need to press up, oops, just shook it. Hopefully nothing broke out of alignment there. Ah, agonizing. It's so easy to shake these hammers out of place. Probably because I shook it. <sighs> now I definitely have to check it. <sighs> I just pulled something else out with it. What was that that just fell in my lap? It was probably the bolt that I was... Yep. Okay, yeah, it was the bolt, or the nut, I guess. Uh, it begins. It's kind of nice that you can see through this sheet, unlike the original one. I wonder if Unicomp made that change on purpose for a similar reason or anything. It looks like everything might still be in place, somehow. I hope I'm right about that. I'm probably not, but I hope I'm right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so back to here, and thread that on, I'm going to thread a few more on just loosely like that, while I try to course things back into place. And looking from below, oh, this is so terrible, I remembered this now.
trying to figure out where the screws are. Okay. Ah! No! I need something other than these stupid... I need something bigger that I can prop it on. Uh, I know. things. Okay. Are they really still all in place? I have a hard time believing this. Maybe my flashlight will help. I mean, all of the things being white like that would also help a lot with verifying, so maybe that's why that change was made too. Uh, yeah. We might be fine. Don't know how. I remember this being horrible. But I guess the thing is that it can happen at any step along the way. Alright, so... Uh, we're going to use the new boxes. To prop this on. And... One more. Just like that. And push this off to the side. It'll probably still fall off and I'll still hate myself, but like, I mean, worth a shot, I think. Okay. Take three. the matrix out. things go through. we try it.
Once I have like three or four of these in, I'll flip it over after tightening it as much as I feel comfortable doing. You don't want to tighten these all the way, by the way. That does not help. You will have lots of keys that are just stuck in position if you tighten it all the way. The tightness affects the feel of the board a lot. And um, also the functionality of the board. You need to be able to keep it loose enough that the rockers can still rock back and forth freely. Okay, that was a slightly less a slightly less horrible fall, but I'm still pissed. Uh, there we go. If I were doing this a lot, I'd probably have a better setup for this. I haven't done this in a couple of years, at least. Alright, this one will go in. Sorry, I'm off camera. This one will go in. And I need to do a couple on this side still. And then I'll flip it. Or even if I don't flip it, I'll at least make sure everything looks to be rocking. it out of here. Uh, and if you, it's hard to do this on camera. Let me aim it up a bit. So if you tilt this, and the springs all fall like that, that's what you want. And if some of them don't fall, oh, that one's folded over, let's pop that free. And if some of them don't fall like that, that means you have it too tight. If you have it too loose, it can be hard to tell until it's back together more, unfortunately. But for now, I'm going to continue. This one's going to need threading through. So I'm holding it up from below. And I'm doing that. Let's brighten this up. I know it's going to be overexposed now, but at least you'll kind of see what I'm doing. Maybe. I'm uh, pushing the screws in more that I loosened up to pull it apart so that I can fit the nuts on the end. <sighs> All right. So now I have a few more positions I can pop on. And then I'll need to like figure out the tightening of all of it once I've got these kind of established. Then once that's all done, I get to check if it works. I'm very hesitant to flip this over until I've done that because 
if it's too loose, then the hammers will fall out of place and it'll be horrible. Uh, okay. So, another screw. Right there. At least with the matrix better, I can rule out a lot of other problems. And know with more certainty if the tightness is an issue or whatever. Alright. Got to tighten that one more. Oh no, just push it up from below and that helped. Uh, yeah, so I have to push that screw up so that it bulges out instead of lying flat. And then twist. There we are. It's coming together. If you really value your time and uh, are okay with the newer boards, you can get a new assembly from Unicomp, I believe. If you want the whole assembly without keycaps, um, they can be problematic to ship, to say the least. So uh, I think on their site they tried to sell them with keycaps, but I'm pretty sure when I contacted them, which was years ago by the way, so this might not be true anymore, and I don't even remember for sure if it was then. I feel like they said they have done that before and they've had issues. Um, I f feel like they did say if you like acknowledge like we aren't responsible if there are problems and you're on your own then we'll ship it. But I don't remember that for a fact. Do not trust me and preferably don't cite this video if you're discussing with them and uh, you're trying to say, but you told this guy, because that might not work. And also, I, I'm i apologizing to you to comp right here in advance if uh, anyone does that. I didn't mean badly. I promise you. Okay, most of the screws are in now. Um, I think I'm probably going to try to do a couple more before I flip it. But we're definitely getting there. Yeah, I found the screw just by feel. It's a good feeling. Okay. still a bunch of screws in there. I mean a bunch of bolts or nuts I guess is what I'm trying to say. There are a bunch of nuts in the little compartment that I'm using to hold them so I don't lose any. Don't want to lose my nuts. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean it. Um... that needs to go up and also try not to twist the uh, membrane sheets where they stick out the back while you're doing this I guess that kind of goes without saying but I don't want to damage my new membrane as well
Yeah, I feel confident enough that I can probably stand it up on its side now, which is what I'm doing here. Hope I'm not wrong about that, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, this one's not centered. This uh, nut isn't sitting right on the screw, so it's cross-threaded. And no, it's not. enough there. It's all very, very much um, something you'll get a feel for rather than anything concrete. And it might take you a few tries. Hopefully it only takes you one. Only Hopefully it only takes me one. But um, Especially if there's like remnants of like drill plastic left over in here, it can cause issues. Um, there's a screw hole. And I haven't done the two that go upside down either. We'll get there. the pliers from behind. Hmm. Very annoying screw. It could be because it's rubbing up against the steel plate that it's actually kind of a deformed screw thread, which makes sense, honestly. Not all these holes are as good as they should be. If they hold it all, it's good enough for me, I guess. Um, yeah, I have trick spring oops written here, and it's pointing to this one, which is exactly the one I thought it was. But it doesn't look like a trick spring to me, so maybe I swapped it and fixed it at some point, and I'm just not remembering. Uh. All right, there's that. And you can see how the fissure opened up here. So I'm going to loosen this screw and this one a little bit. I don't think I'm going to be able to really get that back together, but I like the idea of being able to. Um, yeah, okay. I have all the screws in, but I think I have enough of them in that I can at least try this. Uh oh. Is that one loose? Maybe not. Uh, actually, that looks fine. We'll see, I guess. Only real way to do it is to try it. Um got a few more of these screws I can put in. Oop. Motherfucker. Okay. Well, hopefully, 
that ca catastrophe won't have permanent consequences or permanent enough that I have to redo things. But we'll see. This corner of the board needs screws. Sorry, I'm doing it off camera. Just that there. Mm -hmm. In that corner. I still have all the screws. Um, nutted but hopefully I have enough hmm. so hard for me to tell if this is good or not those I'll actually take the casing off too it's gonna get in the way there's so much dirt that came out of there Wow uh, this was a good thing just to clean it out um, controller board XCV and I can read that. Get that window in focus, move the mouse out of it, unplug the keyboard. And start testing this test. that's in so now keycaps um, oh yeah those are in the box let's start with the escape key okay the control key. Yep. And caps lock, which should also register as control because of my keyboard setup here. And you might find yourself fine tuning this a lot. That does feel snappier. I can feel it on that key. Didn't really on the others, but I felt it on that key. from the thinner uh, rubber sheet. Yeah, I think this is working. I mean, I won't know until I have it all back together, but I think I can probably end it here, honestly. Uh, one thing to know when you're popping the caps on, um, if it's not working right and uh, the cap is pushing down and not clicking, but the spring feels like it's loose and wobbling around like that, then um, actually let's, let's try the keypad minus. Yeah, that's working. Good. Okay, I noticed that one was a little bit stiffer than a lot of the others, so that's why I thought to check it. 
But um, if the springs are tilting like they should, and these seem to be, yeah. Um, and one of the keys just isn't clicking when you pop it in. It could be because it was resting in like a weird position when you slid the cap on. So try tilting the board up a bit and then uh, popping the cap on and seeing if that helps. Well, I think that's all I really wanted to do. Um, try a couple more keys just for fun. Yay. I think this is fixed and um, thank you Unicomp and thank you for watching everyone. And uh, maybe I'll make an addendum when I find out, oh, actually, this doesn't work after all, or whatever. But for now, I think I'm done. So, ah, let's unplug that before I kill anything. And, uh, yeah, um, there's replacing the membrane in a model. Oh, also, if you have an older controller, um, there's the instructions that we were looking at earlier on Unicomp's site that tell you... Um, and those tell you to cut uh, the membrane if you have an older board that doesn't have the LEDs on the membrane. Like um, mine, if it had if it had been a model that had LEDs, would not have had the LEDs on the membrane like this. Um, I retrofitted them in and used a controller board from a newer keyboard, so that's why it does. But um, yeah, so you they want you to cut off these four traces on the end for um, the older boards. And yes, that, that's just something you need to do um, to make it fit in the connector. But apart from that, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, the new one, the new membrane, unlike the old one, has a ribbon here that I could plug one of the original LED boards into, or I could modify my existing LED board to use like one of these membrane connector thingies, but I'm probably not going to bother. Just leave it lying flat like that and leave it well alone. Yeah, um, I think that's it. Good luck everyone. Um, let me know if you have trouble. Uh, I'll let you know if I get this thing back together probably. In fact, I'll probably do that before I upload this. But have a good one, everyone, and um, thanks for watching, if you, if you did. Uh, see you soon. Oops. I'm such a klutz. See you soon. Hi, so uh, I'm just back for a moment uh, with an addendum of sorts, I guess. Um, so far, the board is working just fine. Um, I've got a bunch of the keys in. Not all of them, but a bunch of them. And... Uh, so far they've all been working and I just realized maybe I should just quickly show practically how you put this together. So I have, um, I'm gonna have to, actually no, I, I have the alt key here, so I have my event tester window and you can use something like, um, like aqua key test in windows or whatever. This is just a thing you can do. Um, and so you can see when a key is registered on screen. Um, once you've done that, uh, I also have a picture of the keyboard because this is a non-standard terminal layout. Um, so I'm trying to get the keycaps back in their original positions. So if the keys are resting down against the base like is happening over here, maybe I can switch lenses actually. Give you a better shot. Now we're going to come back up. Yeah, nice, nice blurring on there, isn't it? Um, haloing or whatever you'd call it. Uh, let's cut that down a bit. Yeah. So right now I have um, the F12 key here. And you'll notice the spring is resting flat against the base. Sometimes you can pop it in and that'll work fine. Like right now it's working fine. But if it doesn't, um, you can tilt up a bit so that the springs rock up in place. And then pop it in and put it back down. Um, so yeah, that's just a way you can do things. 
Um, also, I haven't had this problem yet this time around, but in the past I've had it where like, and maybe you'll even keep noticing things for a while after you've put it together the first time, like maybe one key is registering just ever so slightly before the click or something. Uh, if that starts happening to you, try messing with the tension of the screws in the area of the, um, of the key. And if there isn't a screw nearby, um, but there's a hole where one could be, maybe add one. Um, oh yeah, I put the E key here just for a test. I need to take that out. Um, all right. And so I guess I'm just gonna talk a bit more while I um, finish up here. W, E. I have uh, most of the positions of the alphabet keys memorized. I'm mean, basically all of them, I think, but I know what row they're in and I can count over from the left and tell which key is which. But uh, V, Z, X, C, V, yeah, and then B comes next to that. Uh, and I have N in my other hand, so yeah, well, whatever. I'll just leave N there. Actually, I can put N in. Um, and yeah, I'm testing each key a couple times when I put it down. I think the 7 key was a trick spring key, like I mentioned, and I think that it's because the, um, uh, the rocker piece itself, uh, where is my bag of those things? Here it is. Um, so the rocker piece itself that, um, pivots back and forth. I think where the spring connects to that, um, like I had purposefully bent the spring near the end of it, uh, like where the peg is here that hooks onto the spring, so that it came out of the spring at a weird angle. And I think I had to do that to make it work right for the 7 key. And the 7 key is what I'm about to put in, so we'll see if that holds. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yay. And M. There's that. Just grabbed another bucket full of keys. Tilda. Over in the far corner there. You also want to make sure there's no like bouncing where a key um, registers, unregisters, and registers again in one click. Um, that's a really annoying problem. But I guess I worked out most of the bugs first time I did this. And um, the rubber sheet doesn't seem to have caused problems yet. I feel like the rubber sheet had a tear up in the function keys or something. Um, yeah, there. That's better. And I have noticed a slight acoustic difference. Some of these keys do feel a little bit more solid, or sound a little bit more solid. It's so hard for me to not conflate the feel and the sound. By the way, the shift key and the slash key are swapped here because this keyboard, which is the temporary one I was using, um, well, so it does this, where it has the shift key here and the slash key on the other side of these arrow keys. And I never use right shift, basically. If I do, like, I'm reaching to the very edge anyway. So I swapped their positions in the key map, and I just use shift as my slash and question mark key. But I didn't um, flip that around yet. And I don't have the keys to type the command to do that yet. So, um, for the moment, I'm going to continue just popping keys in. Oh, this is numpad 4 and this is numpad 2. Let's put those in their correct spots, shall we? Yeah. Numpad 2. Feels great. Numpad 4. Feels great. Back up to alphabet, 
I have the Y here that's going to go next to the T, which isn't in yet. Right there. Six key. Right there. I tend to tilt up even if I'm not having trouble, just because that way it's more likely to work right the first time. Oop, that one doesn't feel right. That's better. Okay. Um, jump was this spot here. Yeah, let's go back to the numpad yet again. <laughs> Yay. And I don't have the LED board hooked up yet. We'll, we'll, I'll get around to it. I'm not fussed about that. Uh, six. Yeah, looks good. A. F7. S. Between A and D, right arrow key, <laughs> I guess I don't have to keep aiming the camera, but I feel like I'm going to keep doing it anyway. Uh, the tap key is actually the end key, or it's in that spot. Um, yay. And so the P key, Y U I O P. Up key. Home. Self explanatory. Print key, that's going to be print screen. That's probably going to spam a bunch of stuff now because I have a hotkey. Yep. It did. There we go. And now, send line is on the numpad. Let's put that camera shot back up the top. There we go. Send line is on the number pad right there. I still have the terminal this board goes with, so that's another reason I want the keys in the right spot, in case I ever finish recapping it. Another project for another day and maybe another video. Plus key. F6. F. Oh, another thing I did, um, the J and F keys here are from a Model F keyboard that I have. Um, one which I basically bought for parts under the idea that maybe I'd make one of these Model M's into a Model F someday. Or like make the 10 keyless into a Model F. And I bought it before they got horribly expensive. I think mine was like 60 bucks. Which is still a lot, but it's nothing like now. Um, but yeah, I still have that board, and I've still not adapted it or used it, and I don't have the terminal for it, so I'll eventually get around to it. Maybe. <laughs> and if not, I have parts if I get another Model F. Hmm. Doesn't feel quite right. That's better. Nine on the numpad. Yay. Five on the numpad. Numpad's finished now. Erase EOF, that's page down. Two. That was way over here. Like that. H. But yeah, the reason that I um, swapped the keys for F and J is because on Model Fs they don't have the homing bumps, and the homing bumps kind of annoy me. Also, the texture on the F and J keys is slightly rougher than the rest of the keys on this board for whatever reason. 
So um, it's actually still kind of works as homing keys, but without the really big bump. And actually one of my friends immediately noticed that when they typed on my board and really liked it. So yeah, that's a hint, um, everybody. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a market of like five autistic people like me. <laughs> hear that people with money all right um, uh, print line I don't mean anything bad when I say it by the way I'm just being frank I think I'm fine with being autistic <laughs> personally it makes me cooler than everyone else in my own head T goes here. Q right over there. Just a few more keys. F5. Period and angle bracket. F11. O. F2, hold, which is going to be the pause break position, which is right over here, and 4, yay, oh, let's uh, turn off caps lock. Oh, it's jumps. Feels good as new. Beautiful. Okay. So um, I think that was a flawless victory, basically. Um, don't think I made the cracks any worse. It took one real attempt to, like, after I had the screws in. Um, didn't have to redo anything after I stopped the first video. Just started popping things together. Uh, let's tuck the tabs in, the plastic tab thingies. And... Alright. Now, why isn't that quite going together? some resistance. Oh, I know. Duh. That was dumb of me. I taped the screws to the underside of the case because I had it apart, like, when I took the uh, board apart and realized I needed a new membrane, I just didn't put it back together again. So I taped the screws in there so that I wouldn't lose them. Or at least two of the screws, because I've lost the rest over the years. Um... Yeah, that's, that's going to be fun. So, where's the special 7, 30 seconds, or like 5 millimeter bit? I forget. Um, this is 5.5 millimeters. There's also a 7, 30 seconds, like, imperial one that'll work. Is there anything else stopping that from going together? Nope. There isn't. Yay! Oops. So... Pop one in. Such bad camera work, I'm sorry. And on the other side, let's pop that in. Oops! I went to like every hardware store in town to find this thing. This uh, screwdriver. It's been great though. Alright. We're back together. 
Ta-da. Ah, crap, I forgot the LED board. <laughs> oh, well, I'm probably not doing that on this video, but I guess it's kind of an interesting thing, so maybe I will. Um, you can stop watching at this point, though, if you feel like. Um, because the rest of this is bad hacks, basically. Ah, all right. So, let's take this apart again. I'm unplugging the board so that I can just put it down on its face like that and not mess anything up for faster tear downs. All right. Okay. Pop off. And here's the little beast. So this is, um, well, this board, I took an original Model M LED board um, from one of my others before I traded one off. Um, and I stole this pin connector from the RF modulator of a Sega Master System because I took out the modulator and didn't need that anymore. And I realized that it would connect perfectly to like a CD-ROM audio cable, which I happen to have lying around, like an analog one. Uh, and then I added another conductor to that cable because um, it was tying the it was tying the two middle pins together, and I needed them separate. So like it's just hack after hack after hack, basically. But um, yeah, so I did that. And then I bundled it up so that it would kind of fit nicely. And you can see this is just a strand of Ethernet cable here. And it goes to the other end. And the other end is resistor leads that I have. Um, let's see if I can actually get that on camera. Uh, that's going to be so bad. Um, you might be able let, I'll full screen this. One second while I plug it back in. Uh, crap, I just paused the video. My bad. Let's restart that then. There we are. So, now, maybe I can show you. Um, there's, on, on this controller board, yeah, there's, under this ribbon, ugh, crap, I'm trying to get it in view, there's four resistor leads that are sticking up. I guess I have to move it closer. Yeah, you see those four strips right there? Those are um, actually resistor leads. Pushing my fingernail against them a little. And um, those are soldered onto the underside of the um, ribbon connector there. And uh, the other side... Come on. I can do this. I believe in myself. Yeah. That's about as good as it's going to get, I guess. Um, so those resistor leads are just bent at 90 degrees so that they like stick out from underneath the board and then raise up. And so if I can align all of these pins correctly, and I'm pretty sure they go this way. I'm sure this horrible approach has nothing at all to do with why the ribbon, with why the membranes wore out or were flex too hard and broke. <laughs> there is not a single thing that I did wrong on this board or that I would redo. It's flawless. Just keep telling myself that. Um, okay, so the second pin there's nothing to hold the pins together, so I really have to line up each pin one by one and feed it down into its correct 
slide. Okay, yeah, I think that's it. That's gonna work. So, then I tuck it in there. I have poster mounting putty, like I mentioned before, um, that I was using to stick the membranes together in the other one. I have that stuck on the underside of this horrible circuit board. And um, it the circuit board's just mimicking the other one. I don't actually see on this keyboard uh, the markings like the old one had to tell you where you're supposed to stick the um, the PCB. Like uh, this this old this old um, board here, or the old membrane rather, had this nice little uh, translucent marking up here with this rectangle um you can see one's right under my fingertips and then the other one's off on this side that shows where you're supposed to position the thing so since this new sheet doesn't have it maybe i'll just try to overlay it and make a marker like draw it with a marker on there Okay. Yeah, this video is out of sync. Fix it again. There we are. Um, maybe. That's still bad. Eh. That's, that's even worse, actually. Okay, now we're really good. Um, like, really good. Weirdness. So, from. I'll put this on screen a little bit. So, I'm about to drop my phone on the ground. There we go. So, from the edge of this thing, um, I'm just going to line the corner up and then mark the height at which the line occurs which is about there. If I can get this thing to ink. <sighs> Come on. Yeah, this, this marker is dying, but it has a little bit left. Okay, so now I need to mark the horizontal. And the intersection of those will be the top corner. Yeah, I'll change the exposure down. So now you can see what I did. Sorry about that. Um, now the other side, and I guess they don't really feel like they need it because these um, because if yours used this membrane for the LEDs, then it, it would kind of be guided there naturally by the position on the circuit board of the um, ribbon connector. And actually, I guess it sort of works here too, because I purposefully positioned the connector about where the membrane connector would be. But now I guess I at least have the height lined up. And I can just kind of stick it on top there. Can't I? Maybe. Ah, bah. They also have this um, this little cutout here. Ah, annoying. Okay, masking tape or painter's tape. Found painter's tape first. So we're using painter's tape. And we're going to just stick that down and make it a nice evenish surface where the membrane is not pushing it upwards, ideally. I guess there's a fold in the membrane here that's kind of pushing it up, actually. 
yeah that's that's the crease right here on this uh, this sheet anyway now that shouldn't be lifting up as much so it should hold in position a little better and line up the top corner There it goes. Okay, now let's plug this in again. See how our LEDs are doing. Okay, that's that's all good then. So I have scroll lock mapped to caps lock, and I don't think I actually have um, scroll lock mapped at all right now because I'm using this extra key on the numpad as a compose key. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm just gonna say that all works though because it did light up initially during the power on test sequence thing. So yeah, I'll just pop that back together again one more time. So you can see the completed result. And so I can make sure the cables are tucked in. I'm, I'm still proud of this thing, even if it's dumb and kind of ugly. I'm still proud of it. It's a cool hack. Um, okay, so now... Get these two screws again. There's one. And on the other side. Oh my god. Here's two. Okay, now plug it in and see the light shining through. Duh, it's off center. Great. Yeah, I can barely see that at all. <laughs> okay, back up we go. I love this. It's the best. It looks like it's just way too high up, actually. Oh, also, it was kind of lifting up again, so that's fun. Where to put the rest of that? Last attack. I don't really need it. But I can sandwich. Uh, I just paused the video or something, I think. Yeah, I did something to the video. Uh, no, it's actually looking fine. Maybe I did interrupt it, but it seems like it's back. Uh, where'd I put the plastic? Sorry about that, the microphone. Um. Hmm. I am not sure what I did with that. Is it in the tub actually? Yeah, here it is. It's in the little thing where I put all the screws. So I'm gonna stick these sheets back together the way it was before in the hopes that that will aid in preventing it from misbehaving. And then I will move it down further on the sheet 
intuitively, just based on memory, I'm thinking that's about the right position. Um, uh, let's see, does, yeah, that looks like it could be right. I'm not gonna screw it back together this time until I've verified. Uh, yeah, there we go. Much better. Still looks a little off from directly above, so I'm going to move it down a little more. Like that. Yeah, that's more like how I remember it being. Boop. Gotta make it perfect though, you know? Um, yeah, down was better. Okay, so centering the keys over. Yeah, that was showing it up higher. Wonder what happened. Anyway, even if you have a board like mine, you'll figure it out eventually just by brute forcing it. And you'll figure out what you like and where you like it. <laughs> Looks like I um, can push down, and if I push down hard enough, it'll short something. That's cute. <laughs> it's an LED. It should be fine. Worst thing, it burns out. But with that said, let's space it out a little if we can. There we go. <sighs> Bothering me forever. Okay, we're good. That's perfect. We're fine. Not touching it again. All right. So now, one more screwing back together. I think this might be a little bit tougher to screw back together than it was before and my guess as to why that is is that some of the screws are bumping into the base of the chassis or like basing of the case uh, but I don't really know fully exactly what all the issue is. Seems to be fine though. Oops, I just paused the video. Let's uh, let's fix that again after I plug this in. I need to fix that. I need to make it so I have a version of MPV where I can't pause the video with the space bar like that. No oh, caps locks on. Um, there we go. Okay. Screw it back together. And just as it's getting dark out. I really made decent time, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think it's been like an hour, maybe um, an hour and a half, I don't know, um, since I started. We'll see. We'll see when I edit it. <laughs> I 
But yeah, if the case is having trouble going together, it's probably because of screws bumping into something in there. Just be aware of that. And uh, yeah, it looks good. Looks good. Sounds great. It's definitely louder than before with this new mat. I'm going to keep the old one just because I might want to go back to it for authenticity or whatever eventually. And also because I'm a bad hoarder that way. But it's still a good, it's still in good shape, so I'm going to keep it. And um, I probably won't keep the membrane sheets, but I might scan them in or something. Uh, yeah, there's the keyboard. Um, plug it back in one more time now. And I'll call it there. So yeah, now have a good night for real. Yeah, that's so good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, have a good night for real now, guys. And um, I will talk to you later. I'll use this keyboard to close the stream. Once I find the correct window. <laughs> Let's close that one.